friends hi everybody Kathleen Harvey here um, I am doing something out of obedience <laughs> so um, bear with me I am NOT a um, Bible scholar by any sense of the imagination um, however I am learning to heed the voice of the Lord when he tells me to do something and so um, he had given me this the heart to do this a few weeks ago actually and I thought you know what that would be good because a number of years ago I did not understand this concept and a girlfriend explained it to me and I my life was forever changed and so I know that the Lord is telling me to come on here and do this because um, it's for it's for some of you too and um, you you a lot of you know I use essential oils but when I started using essential oils it was because God literally told me to open my mouth and share about essential oils because there was a verse in the Bible that said yokes are destroyed and burdens are removed because of the anointing oil it's in Isaiah 10 27 and when he told me that, I literally like saw like burdens falling off of people's shoulders and um, physical burdens, emotional burdens, um, spiritual burdens, I believe. And so uh, anyway, I started, I started learning more, like what does that mean? And when I, when I was praying about whether or not to open my mouth about essential oils 11 years ago, it was this scripture that talked about anointing uh, your child's room, actually was what it was, anointing your child's room with oil. And I was like, I have no idea how to do that. Like I've never, I've, I've not used oil to anoint. That's not how I was raised. And so she had talked about it in where, where I read that scripture, where yokes are destroyed and burdens are removed because of the anointing oil. And, um, and when I read that, I was like, huh, so you actually can anoint like rooms, like not just people and, and see things change. And I was like, huh, okay, well, that's worth a try. Like, you know, why not? Well, when, when my neighbors are coming home, just so if you hear noise, it's uh, unusual that it's even quiet. So, um, that's why I know God's telling me to do it. So anyway, when, um, when I started learning the concept that when somebody comes into your home, when you start to feel fear filled, um, I'm not even gonna say fearful, just fear filled because it's just like a, a temporary piece. And when you start to feel that way, that's not usually from God. He doesn't, there's a holy fear and then there's like a scared fear, right? And so um, whenever you start to feel that way, you have to question and think like, okay, well, what's, who's entered my home or what have I allowed in my home? Or maybe it's nothing that you've even done. Maybe it's just a, an atmosphere that's yucky for a while. Um, but there is in the Bible, in the book of Exodus, um, starting chapter two, three, read read the first few chapters of Exodus, but all the way up to like chapter 12. And if you don't like to read, listen to it on the Bible app, which is free from you version and, um, and have it read to you, okay? But it talks about this story of the Israelites who were God's favored people and um, they were, they were being slaves. They were being mistreated. And the ruler at the time, his name was Pharaoh. And God said, he said, Moses, Aaron, I need you to go tell Pharaoh to let those people go. Let the Egyptian people go. My, it's, sorry, let the Egyptians release the Israelites. It's the uh, Israelites. Did I say that wrong? See, the Israelites are the chosen people. So he was saying, let them go and don't let them be slaves anymore. The Israelites are my chosen people. And Pharaoh's, Pharaoh was like, I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it. And so there was plague after plague that was sent forth 
frogs and hail and fire and locusts and um, the blood, like the, the river, the waters turned to blood, like all kinds of like major, major issues that happened in their country. And Pharaoh still said, nope, not going to do it. I'm not going to let those people go. And so the last day, God said, okay, Moses, like tell, tell him whatever he chooses, whatever Pharaoh chooses, like that's, that's what I'm going to do. And Pharaoh said, well, the firstborn of every Israelite son will die. And so what happened was the opposite. So every Egyptian firstborn child would die and be sacrificed. But the Israelite people, because God was protecting them, told them to make a sacrifice. And that sacrifice was in the Old Testament of the Bible, an animal. So they would take an animal into their home and he had kind of a protocol of cook the animal and this is, this is how you do it and this is what you do and it talks about that in the Bible. Well, after, after they sacrificed the lamb, which was the way that it was done in the Old Testament, okay, for like when things were, when people would sin or things would go, when things would go bad, that is what they would do. They would sacrifice an animal. And it was usually the firstborn animal. It was, um, it was, it was very sacrificial to um, the firstborn animal is like the, the chosen, the, pri the prized one. And, and so what he told them to do was take a hyssop branch and dip it in the blood of that animal and put it over their doorpost and the, the lentil of their door. And so I'm going to show you what that looks like. But hyssop is an essential oil that we use. And it's really good for um, opening up airways and passageways and, and like breathing. It's really, really good for that. And I think if you're sacrificing an animal in your house, it's probably not going to smell so yummy. So they were being cleansed just from the hyssop branch that was a branch. It wasn't the oil that they used. It was an actual branch, which is what essential oils are. They're, they're plants and trees, okay? And so they would take the dip the hyssop branch in there, and then they would anoint their household. And what would happen is, or what didn't happen, is the firstborn child in the homes of the Israelites was spared. They were not killed, and it was because the blood of the lamb that was sacrificed prevented that from happening, because that's, the, that's what God told them to do. Well, fast forward, the New Testament in the Bible talks about Jesus Christ, and Jesus was our sacrifice. He was the Passover lamb. You'll hear that word, that terminology. The Passover lamb is 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 who I asked I asked Jesus to be a part of my life and when I said hey Jesus you like help me figure things out here and 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 just just help me like navigate life his blood covers over my sin and so I'm like you know what Jesus like I'm super sorry I screw up all the time every day but because of his sacrifice on the cross for us and he died like God literally sent Jesus to earth to live and then to die no knowing he would die in our place you guys so when I when I apply um, it's called the blood of the lamb I, I apply the blood or the blood of the lamb to my family or to my home or when I'm praying I say um, may the blood of Jesus be over us Lord may your blood cover us and protect us just like it did in the Passover in the Old Testament and that is that is what that is why we don't have to still sacrifice animals is because Jesus was our sacrifice.
However, when I pray now, I take my essential oils, okay? And I may choose to take like my frankincense, okay? And just apply it, dropping it over my head. I gotta be careful like it doesn't roll into my face, <laughs> um, my eyes. I, I use sometimes to use a combination of whatever God's telling me to use that day. But frankincense, Exodus 2, is the closest to the holy anointing oil that was used when they would um, use oils to um, protect an, an incense in the Old Testament is talked about a lot. Those were essential oils, frankincense um, and then myrrh. So like I may take these oils in my hand and I'm just gonna show you what happened in the Old Testament. When, when they were applying the blood of the lamb to the lentils, the lentil was up here. And so they would say, what I, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the blood, the actual blood from the hyssop branch, if it's applied left, right, top, that top blood is going to drip down to the bottom of the door post and it makes a cross. Isn't that amazing? So when you apply the blood, okay, of the lamb, I'm using essential oil. Essential oil in itself is, is not the only thing that protects us, although it's part of it. For me, it is part of it. It is part of like the, the smell, the remembrance, the knowing. There is, there is um, there's a physical um, piece that happens when you apply essential oil to your, um, even just inhaling it, okay? But applying it to your skin or to your ears or to your neck or to your chest. And so I can choose to do that over my home. And Lord, right now, I just pray it for all of us in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I just pray that your blood would cover over our homes, over our families, over our possessions, over what you care about. May we care about the things that you care about, Lord. May your blood protect us. May it, may it strengthen our physical bodies, the bodies of our family members, those that are protecting us right now, Lord. But ultimately, it's you. It's you that protects us. It's your blood that covers over us. In Jesus' name. So I always, I always pray the blood as, as my family leaves, if I'm ever in a position where I feel fearful, or if I'm just in a, a mode of wanting to protect, that you have that authority. If you've asked Jesus in your heart, you carry that same authority to do that. And he's asked us to take that authority over our homes and over our families. And today is Passover. And so it was appropriate that the Lord said, yep, today you get to tell people. <laughs> so apply that.